when you're getting ready to do a join of information from um, a geographic feature, like a feature class or a shape file, um, one of the things that we suggest is that you open up the table and take a look at the different fields that the geography holds. So we're looking at our feature class of county that is projected. And in that we've got a county in S, we've got a geo ID, and then we also have a name field. I often suggest that students not use the name field simply because um, sometimes there might be a misspelling in the data, sometimes there might be an extra space at the end, um, but sometimes it's the best thing. Um, sometimes you'll find that numeric values are better because there's less chance of um, misspelling it. Things like um, in Missouri, St. Louis, St. Louis could be spelled out S-A-I-N-T, or it could be S-T, it could be S-T period. And so because of that variation, that's why we often don't use name. Um, we more often use something like geo ID or, um, or some other type of ID. Now, the interesting thing about this is that when you download your data, um, this median age, data. It is something that is in um, a .csv, and a .csv is a comma-separated values file, so you can actually open it with something like a notepad and look at all of the data ahead of time. Um, in this case, I've actually already fixed this data, but you may download the data and it may have something like um, Atkin County, comma, Minnesota. And if it comes up with that, you can either use a text editor and their ability to go in and use the replace tool, or you can use something like Excel and also use the replace um, tool. So if you're opening that data, and I'm going to, um, because we've already corrected this data, it's probably not gonna be as useful, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and open this up it's going to open in Excel. Um, and when it opens in Excel, if you spread that out, now you see that right here, um, it's showing geo area with the comma Minnesota. So what you want to do is you want to come over here and you want to use the replace. Um, if you've never used replace before, often it's a great way of um, when you need to make a massive change to a document, it's a really great way of doing it. You can do it in, in a Word doc, you can do it in a text document, but you can also do it in Excel. So if we're trying to change this so that it's only at Ken County, um, then what we would do is we would say, um, we would say we want to get rid of the comma. We want to make sure that we go comma and then we hit space. So you'll see there's a space in there. And then we want to make sure that our spelling is correct, Minnesota. Um, and then we're going to replace it with nothing because we're going to make it, in essence, delete every instance it finds of Minnesota. So we're going to replace that. We found 87 replacements. Um, we can then close it and you'll see that it's changed it. If we had wanted to use this field right here, GeoID, so that we were mostly using the numerics, um, one of the things that we could do is compare, and I know I'm switching a lot of screens here, but we could compare our fields inside of ArcGIS Pro. So we have this GeoID field and we have this county field. So I'm going to go ahead and sort these um, ascending, and Atkins is 27001. And in our Excel spreadsheet, you'll see that the 27001 is there as well. So you can either change it in the text or you can change it in the GeoID. So if I wanted to change it in the GeoID, I want to make sure that I'm picking up everything from the zero at the beginning all the way over to the US. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. And then when I do my replace, Instead of doing it with comma Minnesota, I am going to delete that out. I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to replace that with nothing. And what that will do is that will cause it to have these match 27001 for Atkin County, 27003 for Anoka County. And this way we're able to use that GeoID here and the GeoID here to match. While we can use the, the name SLAD, um, that always, it doesn't always work, and you may find that one of the counties won't 
uh, join properly because there's something um, extra in it. Um, so once we've done that, this is our median underscore age Excel spreadsheet. We're going to go to file. We're going to go to save as. And we're going to go into the folder and I'm just going to browse to the folder. So I'm here in my median age folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an, um, I'm going to back it up. I'm going to call it median age and then underscore, or actually I'm not even going to put an underscore. I'm just going to run it all together. Um, median age, Minnesota. And we're going to save it there. That way we can exit Excel. And it's going to say, hey, some of the features in your workbook might be lost. No problem. We're going to keep that formatting. We're going to say yes. When we go to exit, it's going to say, do you want to save your changes? Save the changes. That's fine. Um, it's going to say median age Minnesota. We've already saved that. So we can cancel that and truly just exit Excel. So I'm going to not save that. Now, the perk of this is that when we go into our folder and we go to add our table in from our Minnesota table <clears throat> in median age, this might take a second, um, what we're going to find is our original CSV, and then we're going to find the one that we changed. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag and drop that over into my um, into my contents. You can also just drag it into the map and it'll show up down here. And if I open this table, now I can see that I have a GeoID and a county um, GeoID that they exact match. And like I said, in this case, we can all, also do name LSAD, median age. So as we go in, we're going to go, we're, those checks help us get to that join state. And so we're going to add that join. This may take a second. It's got to think a little bit. Um, so we've got our county project, and we can either use name SLAD or we could go back to our GeoID. And then our table is median age Minnesota at CSV. It knows that that's the one that it wants. And if I'm doing GeoID, then I need to match it to GeoID. If I select name SLD up here, then I need to make sure that I'm picking geo area here. So because I went with GeoID, I'm going to go with GeoID, and then I'm going to run it. It should take a little bit of time. If you're using the VDI, that can take a little bit longer. If it takes more than 10 minutes, reach out to one of your instructors or the fellows or um, a TA. In this case, uh, we now can go back over to our county project. Once we have done that, it shouldn't come up with any nulls. So something is going on inside of this. Um, let me remove that join. Oh, I removed the data. That was not smart. So I'm going to back that up. Okay, we all have moments where we go, oof, didn't mean to do that. Let me go back and re-add in the projected data. I meant to remove the join. That's kind of the funny thing that happens. So this is going to be inside of my Close the Minnesota, close this, Got this, bring that county back in. Um, oh no, I want county project. Once again, making a little mistake there, but that's okay. That's all part of the learning process. Uh, that's going to be saved inside of this one, bringing in the corrected one. It's projected. Um, I'm going to right click on it and make sure it's removed the layer. So the accident of removing it removed the joins. But typically what you do is you would go to the joins. If it doesn't actually join, you're going to go to the join and then, um, then you're going to select remove all joins to run it again. So we're going to try running this again. Um, and we're going to use, we're going to go back over to geoprocessing. Um, and we're going to select our county project. Instead of GeoID, let's do the name SLS name LSAD and then median age MN is still the same thing and this one we're going to do geo area. Now uh, I, I will place bets that this one is going to run and I'm going to go back and tell you why the other one didn't run even though it looked like the numbers were exactly the same. Okay so now we're going to look at our table and you'll notice that now 
it has brought in all that information from the table. The reason why this time the numbers didn't work when I say, hey, this is always a good thing to do is to make the use the GeoIDs. In this case, if I hover over GeoID, you can see that this type is a long. That means that it's a numeric field. The county project of the GeoID is a text. You actually can't bring text and um, numbers together. It doesn't know how to join it because it sees it as different types of data. Um, if you ever come into that where you are using something in their different types of um, data, what you're going to do is you're going to duplicate that geo ID field and it's really easy to do. You go in and you add it. I know this is a little extra step. This is like a bonus tip um, for the lab, but it happens quite often. So what we want to do is we want to make it um, right now, our geo ID is text. We want to make it long. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a field called geo ID underscore long. We're going to make it the type of long. Um, and then we're going to come up here to the top and we're going to save it. Now, the cool thing about this is that we've just created a field that's sort of a matching field. And it's going to add on way over here in the end because I had already done this join. Um, but what we can do is we can calculate the field, and this may not make sense at first, but in calculating the field, when you see it, it, it will make complete sense. Our input table is that, is our county projected, projected field. Um, or we're going to put it inside that long field. Um, we can either use Python or we can switch it over to Arcade. It really doesn't matter. Um, but what we're going to do is we're basically going to read this. County project GeoID long should equal GeoID. We're going to double click that. It's going to fill in and I'm going to run it. And what's going to happen is it's literally just going to copy the data from the one that is in a text field over here in GeoID. And we're going to make it match over here um, exactly and precisely per row. But when we hover over it, oops, when we hover over it, come on, hovering over the field name you'll see that it's now a long field. That way it would actually go in and match in a join. Um, and, and that's just something that happens in GIS and happens with data that even if it comes from the same source, uh, the Census Bureau has one side that deals with the geography being um, in, a, in a text and then the, um, the other one it's in a long format. But that's the quick and easy. Um, don't forget, after you create your county projected join, um, these, this is a temporary status of that join. So what you're going to want to do is go to your data, export the features, and create it as a new feature class um, in your lab file, um, in your lab five folder. Um, so this output feature class is going to be our median age, Minnesota. And that's the feature class that's saving in our geo database, and that will permanently um, that will permanently join that data together. You can actually go in and join all of the files and then export the data, or you can actually go in and then and do it one at a time. So if you do it one at a time, you can go back and then go to your joins and relates, remove all joins, and th then repeat the process for. Each of, um, each of the tables that you're working through in this particular lab.